Thank you for tuning in to the second semifinal match of the U.S. Open Crokinole Championship, a National Crokinole Association event. In the last semifinal match, we saw whose hammer is it? Ron and Paul beat the Holy City Flickers from the Charleston Crokinole Club. And now we have the Canadian cue balls, Jeremy and Andrew versus the Power Flickers, the Beerling Brothers, the returning champs of last year's U.S. Open Players now to volley to decide who will have the first hammer. The Beerlings win the volley, and it looks like they will opt to have the Canadian cue balls shoot first, taking the first hammer. Fist bumps around the board. Very great sportsmanship. A little bit of jellyfish action from Jason. Hutchinson to start, scoring that open 20. Ray now to follow. And follow suit. 1-1 one, one in the 20s cup. Tracy now to shoot. Comes a little bit short, but not leaving an easy shot for Jason. At least not to convert. Gets the off and rolls away from the 20, leaving a very, very nicely posted disc. Players discussing their options. Looks like Tracy is suggesting that Hutch just touch. Hitting the post. Oh, and he gets the off. Very nice. Leaving it between the pegs. Not giving Ray a lot to work with here. Now the Beerlings do have hammer, so this is not at all a bad spot. Tracy now might have a very thin slice to get the 20. Not quite. Comes up short. Now this looks like a nice 20 for Jason. Let's see if he converts, and he does. Beerlings now. Up in the 20 cup, 2-1. to one. Hutchinson, definitely an easy off here. Might be looking for a post as well. Catches a post, but not towards the 20. Right now, going for the off. They are in a very comfortable position. The power flickers. Tracy, looking to make something happen here. At the very least, wants to stay in the 15. Might be able to catch a post. Hits and sticks, has a little bit of a giggle. Definitely hoping for some action there. Jason, perfectly content to get the off. And just off there. Maybe an opportunity for Hutchinson. He points out the path for a touch 20. Let's see if he can convert. And not quite. Lots of action off the post there. Doesn't give Ray a lot to work with. But now they have two discs on the board, up at 20, and with hammer. The Canadian cue balls have their work cut out for them. Looks like Tracy will leave that hanger opportunity for Hutchinson on his turn. Jason will be trying to mess with that shot, looking to roll in to bump his own. I don't think the 20 would be there, but lots of action off the post. But the opportunity is still there for Hutchinson. It looks to be slightly heavy, so certainly not a gimme. And Hutchinson nails it, evening the 20s cup. Right now, if he can score in open 20, pressure will still be on the Canadian cue balls, which he does. Jeremy needs to make something happen off the post. Now two, three shots for each team now. Jeremy gets the off. Jason just needs to not set up Hutch. Might be looking to follow through to the further side of the pegs. And, oh, opens the door for Hutchinson. If he can get this 20 and the off, the Canadian cue balls will have this game back in reach. Certainly not out of reach now, but unfortunate miss. Dips out of the 20 and maybe an opportunity for Ray here to solidify the round. Gets the off. Jeremy now, this opportunity, needs the off and the 20 to make Jason shoot. Now shots inconsequential. The inconsequential, the power flickers, will take this first round. We see that nice off 20 from Jason as well as one from Hutchinson. Very close round there. Score is now 2-0 for the Power Flickers. Ray to shoot first. The Canadian cue balls will have hammer. Tracy now to shoot. 
with Ray draining that first 20. Tracy follows suit, now 1-1 in the 20s cup. Now, all of these players, I believe, are in the top 10 currently of the NCA rankings. If not, very, very close. Hutchinson holds the third place spot currently in the NCA, having tons of success at tournaments before this. Jason now to shoot. The Canadian cue balls have hammer, so this is a very good spot for them. Jason does not get the off. Not a lot of pressure to go for a 20. It looks like the opportunity might be there, but looks like Hutchinson might just be considering the off. Tracy and Hutchinson debating their options. Jeremy debating if he can work with that blue disc or if Hutchinson will hit that disc given the angle he's taken. I don't think he will. Clean off, very nice, kind of close to the post there. Ray now looking to angle in. Oh, that's what they were discussing. Because Ray might have an opportunity to get in. Certainly cannot count the Beerlings out of anything. Gets up to between the pegs. Not quite the right angle. Jeremy now. See what he can do. If he's just going for the off. Or potentially a follow through. Ops to hit and stick. Gets the off. Tied in the 20s cup. The Canadian cue balls do have hammer in this round. So they are in a very good position. But Jason... Puts the pressure on with a beautiful little bit of a follow through there. Hutchinson now to shoot the open 20. If he wants to keep the pressure on, this is a critical shot and he gets it. Canadian cue ball still in control of this round, but the Beerlings very close behind. Ray now needs to get play into the middle, or I would think he would want to get play into the middle Pushes through. Very nice. Doesn't leave Jeremy with anything super clean. Might be a little bit of a cross between an angle and a follow through. Not quite. And leaves the door open for Jason. If Jason gets this, it'll be a reset. Teams down to six discs each now. Gets to 20. Not the off, still very good. The power flickers again, putting pressure on Hutch. If he can get this 20, they still won't be in a bad spot. Drains the 20 and with one disc on the board. Very, very nice. Down to one circle around and Ray! With a beautiful shot, putting the pressure on Tracy now to score this open 20. And he gets it. Down to the last three shots. Very closely tied up. Jason drains a 20, up 120 now. But Canadian cue balls do have hammer. So as long as they can keep draining these, they are good. Hutchinson follows suit. Ray dips out a little bit. Maybe an opportunity for Tracy here. Now, if he scores a 20, oh, <laughs> Mr. <coughs> Mr. Little Spoon there. A little bit of a cameo, and again, and Jeremy gets a 20. Very, very nice. Jason needs to score this to make Hutch shoot, which he gets. A valid shot from Hutchinson, and this round will go to the Canadian cue balls. Lining up now. Simple shot, but lots of pressure. Doesn't get the 20, but he didn't need it. This round will go to the Canadian cue balls. We see a very nice shot from Jason here. The Beerlings putting tons of pressure on Tracy and Hutchinson this round. But nonetheless, the Canadian cue balls come out of the second round, tying the score 2-2. We go into the third round now. Tracy starting with an open 20. Jason goes long. It looks like it is just in little bit of a tricky shot to go through the pegs for Hutchinson. Debating the outside. Easier angle. Just dealing with the post either way. Deciding what the best thing to do here is. Looks like he'll be going through the pegs. 
Now, the power flickers do have hammer here, so that 20 would have been very nice, and it was very close, but now an opportunity for Ray, who gets to 20. Full reset now, back to Tracy. Comes up short, and it looks like this will be a conversion for Jason for the 20s. He is on those today. Very nice shot. The power flickers now up in the 20s cup with hammer. Hutch evening out the 20s cup. Tracy giving a little eyebrow wiggle, a little wiggle action to the camera. Tracy definitely needs this 20, doesn't quite get it. Jason now to shoot. Be the question of whether to stay on the outside or to push through to somewhere that Hutch doesn't have an easy 20. Or maybe just to follow through 20. Jason, Jason can do that. Jason has tons of options. He has skills for those options. Pushes and might have cracked the door slightly for Hutchinson. Little bit of an angle slash follow through here. See what he's able to do. And not quite. Ray now with the backboard. See if he is able to convert. Very nice shot. Now up in the 20s cup. The Beerlings are in control of this round. Tracy drains the 20. Tying the cup. Beerlings not stressed. Jason just lifts out of the 20. Maybe an opportunity for Hutchinson here. Slight follow through. Doesn't quite get it. Ray now with a heavy hanger. Also misses, but not a bad spot. Not leaving a lot of options for Jeremy. Down to less than half the shots left. As long as the Beerlings don't set up Tracy and Hutchinson anywhere in this round, they will be taking the next two points. And Jason does a very good job staying away from the 20 hole. Hutchinson now debating... Which angle is the best to catch a post and come back for a 20? Decent placement. Ray now most likely looking for the off. A roll away as well. Very nice. Leaves it between the pegs. Again, a tricky shot for Tracy if he wants to get a 20. Bounces off the pegs a bit too much to the gutter. Now, Jason shot, who drains the 20. Hutchinson needs a 20 to make Ray shoot, which he gets. All Ray needs is a valid shot, though, and the power flickers will take this round. Ends it with a 20. Very nice shot. We see this heavy hanger from Ray and this nice backboard from Jason. Just very consistent on those today. You cannot leave these brothers with any opportunity because they will take it. Into the fourth round, 4-2 four for the Power Flickers. Jason starts with an open 20. Hutchinson follows suit. All players around the table know that every 20 is critical. Tracy goes long, and there might be a 20 opportunity here for Jason. Which, they are already up, but a 220 advantage would be huge. We'll see what he does, whether he sees it. If not, he'll most likely just go for the off. And the Beerlings have been doing a very good job of keeping a play away from Hutchinson. And Tracy comes to the outside now. There might be an angle in, but it is certainly tight to the pegs. Seems to be what Hutchinson is going for. See if he can bring it back in. Very nice, but comes up short. And may have left a 20 opportunity here for Ray. See if he's able to convert. Up the side seems to be the best option. And he gets it. Very nice. Now up. Two 20s in the cup. Tracy now. Needs this open. Decides not to mess with the shot a little bit far back. They definitely needed that 20. So that was a good call from Tracy. Although Jason now debating what they should do, whether you should be going for the 20 or simply keeping play away. Looks like he will get the touch, keeping that 220 advantage. Very nice from Jason. Hutchinson now to be going through his own and leaving Ray with a not very nice leave. 
Nice. Leaves it between the pegs. Great shot from Hutchinson. Right now, not a super challenging shot for these high-level players, but certainly not a gimme. And he gets it. Tracy and Hutchinson debating their options. It doesn't look like the touch 20 is there. He is debating, I think, yes, following through, catching a peg, and a 20. Doesn't get it. Leaves the opponent disc on the board. Jason now to shoot. Might be looking for the drive through. A little bit of a follow through and a 20. He just wants to be careful not to take off his own. The power flickers do have a 120 advantage right now. And certainly want to hold on to that. Very nice off. Might have left Hutchinson with an opportunity though. Not as easy as what it was before. So that is very good on Jason's part. Debating the laneways. Jeremy tells Hutchinson to go through the center. The other way he might have been catching a post. And not quite leaves a large opening for Ray. To gain back that 220 advantage. Which he gets with a nice 20. Opponent's disc caught a peg on the way out. So not the off as well. Still a very good position. The Canadian cue balls debating their options. They do have hammer. But being down 220s this is not a good spot. Even if they end with 2 in the 15. That will not be enough to win this round. So, Jeremy will be looking for a 20. Not a lot of great options here. Any follow-through option is taken away from that one blue disc that is in the way. Or is very tight at the very least. Looks like he'll be going for it. Unfortunate. Now, he did need to go for it, but really hurts there. Now, the Beerlings being up a 320 advantage. Hutchinson tries for a follow through. Fortunately, it doesn't work out. Ray, most likely, just to keep play away from Tracy, doesn't want to give him an angle opportunity from the five. Instead, opts for between the pegs. Might be a touch 20 opportunity here, which Tracy does not score. Mathematically, I believe the Canadian cue balls are now out of this round. Still taking these final shots, a little bit of practice. Hutchinson gets a very nice 20, bringing the cup to 6 and 4. Players emptying the cup to get their count to make sure they are doing the right thing on their next shot. Ray will be just going for the off. Tracy clears. Inconsequential as the power flickers will take this round. Very nice shots again. All around the board. The Beerlings taking advantage of every opportunity. Scores now 6-2 for the Power Flickers. Hutchinson to open. The Beerlings will have Hammer. Open 20 to start off. Let's see if Ray can follow. And he does. Tracy now. To shoot. And gets it. Now dialed in. Jason scoring the 20. One full circle around the board. The Beerlings last played together in the 2023 Ontario Doubles Crokinole Championship and also took the win there. This duo has tons and tons of wins under their belt. If you don't know the Beerlings, make sure to give them a look. Tracy, the first to miss. The Beerlings having the hammer. This is very good for them. Just looking for the off and to keep it away from Hutchinson, which Jason does a great job of. Between the pegs. See if he's able to catch a peg and bring play back to the middle. An unfortunate roll goes off, leaving the door open for Ray. If he can score this open 20, which he does. They are now up in the 20s cup with Hammer. Very great spot for the Beerlings. Tracy evens the 20s cup out and we are back into this 20s race. Jeremy and Hutchinson have also partnered together before having great success as a duo certainly cannot count these two out they are down two rounds for now 
but that certainly could change. Tracy goes a little bit long. On the right side of the hole, not giving Jason a great opportunity, although we have seen him hit those follow-throughs. So, certainly cannot count him out for that. Unsuccessful with the shot there. Does get the off, but may have opened the door. Players taking the cup out again. They just score too many 20s. Stacking them up. Now on the side. Looks like they will perhaps continue to do that for the rest of this round at the very least. Hutchinson maybe with a touch 20 opportunity here. Taking his time. The audio is off for you, but there is some background distractions from the wonderful Jason Malloy. And Hutchinson wisely took his time and scores the 20. Jason follows with the open. Tracy now considering his options. Huge shout out to the Extra Pint Crokinol Club for hosting this fantastic tournament, which many have stated to be their favorite tournament of the year. Clear board now. The power flickers are up two 20s down to the last round of the board. If the Beerling score one more 20, they will have sealed this round. Which they do. Round now belongs to the Beerlings. Tracy comes up short on his last shot. Jason just takes a practice shot for his last 20. And the power flickers will bring the score to 8-2-2. Two, two. Lots of consistency from all players around the board on their open 20s. Which is why it's so critical that you don't miss Ray Comes up short between the pegs. Not an easy shot for Tracy, but certainly there. Gets the off. Rolls on the outside. Very, very nice. Maybe not intentional from Jeremy's facial expression there. But nonetheless, this is very good. The Canadian cue balls do have hammer, so they are more than content to keep play on the outside. Maybe a slight opening for Ray to come in there. Or he might go for a hide. Very nice spot. Trace will be forced to go through Hogan's alley for the off. Taking his time and getting that shot and the off. Very nice. A little bit of a chess match going on here. Debating the best spot to leave the disc. Again, they don't want to leave the door open for the Beerlings. The Canadian cue balls being the last to shoot for this round. Want to just keep any opportunities away from the Beerlings. Ray now going for the angle in. Almost gets it, but not quite. Tracy now to the side, whether he wants to follow through or to just get play away. Opts to get to the further side of the pegs away from Jason to not leave him any chances of a 20. Looks like Jason tried to catch a peg there. Not quite. Hutchinson. Might be debating a touch 20, which would give them a huge advantage right now. Gets the off. Sticks right in the middle. Not an easy shot for Ray. Potentially a follow through here, but a decent amount of distance between that disc and the 20. Players debating their best course of action. Might be best to just hit and stick. There's still half the shots left, so looks like a bit of a follow through. Easy off for Jeremy. Most likely will stay between the pegs. Very nice. Gets the off. Little bit of, <laughs> little bit of a happy accident there. You see Tracy making faces. Very expressive. You don't need the audio to know what he's thinking. Tracy pointing out the 20. Wants Hutchinson to convert. See if he's able to. Heavy hanger there. All good. Two discs on the board with Hammer. No 20s yet, but still great spot. Ray, yet again, left with an interesting dilemma. Does he just get the off and wait for a better opportunity, or does he go for the follow-through? Pushes through a follow-through again. Not quite the right direction. Jeremy looks like he'll be going through his own. Almost got a follow-through 20 there. Very good attempt. Jason will be leaving that disc for Ray to go for Hutchinson. Now looking for a way to mess up Ray's 
shot there. If you can get it from the outside, that would be preferable. Looks like that's what Hutchinson will be going for. If you can get this, still not a bad spot whatsoever for the Canadian cue balls. Even if Ray does get this 20, see if he's able to convert and not quite. That is unfortunate. If Tracy can get the 20 off this, he will have all but sealed the round. Rolls away, still very, very difficult for Jason. Needs something big here. If he takes off the 15, Hutchinson will still have to shoot. And if he can catch a peg as well. Jason stays in the 15. Hutchinson needs to make contact with that red disc to win this round. Doesn't seem like a difficult shot, but keep in mind, if he had missed... That would have been a loss of a game, so lots of pressure. And Hutchinson gets it. This round will go to the Canadian cue balls. We see this Hogan's Alley shot from Tracy. Very nice. Great control from the Canadian, Canadian cue balls this round. Tracy going long, leaving the door open for Jason. Backboard there. The power flickers do have the hammer. So this is a great start for them now up in the 20s cup. Looks like that blue disc is still on the board, which may actually come to hurt them later. Right now with a few options, if he thinks that shot is better for Jason, he may opt for that blue disc on the outside, which looks like that's what he'll be doing. Gets the off. Tracy now with his own dilemma. Already in a horrible spot. Looks like his blue disc is almost blocking that clear line. Very thin line there. Or he could try to go through his own. But I'm also pretty convinced there's a post in the way. And Jeremy Tracy is good. He cannot go through posts though. Players discussing the best line of action because if Tracy doesn't mess with that blue disc it will most likely be another 20 for Jason offs for the outside loses his own shooter if Jason can convert this the power flickers will be in a very good position gets it now a 220 advantage with hammer the Canadian cue balls have their work cut out for them Hutchinson comes up short unable to convert looks like the 20 is there now on shots like this previously, we've seen Ray and Jason just stay away from the 20, but that might be a bit too tempting. We'll see what Ray does with this. No 20, but gets the off and doesn't leave Jeremy with a super nice or easy, easily accessible 20. Pushes through the follow through, not the right direction though. Jason most likely to just hit and stick between the pegs, doesn't get the off though. Hutchinson now debating his best option. Won't be going through his own. Looks like he'll be coming through that right lane for a touch 20. Maybe an off, but I think that post is in the way. Very nice. Closing that 20s gap a little bit. Great work from Hutchinson. Tracy now with a few options. Looking if he can angle in and maybe catch a post there. Not quite. Kind of sticks in place. Jason now for a simple takeout. The Beerling brothers do have the hammer and 20 advantage right now, so they are content to just stay on the outside as much as they can. There's still that one disc in the middle, which Hutchinson will be attempting to work with. Unfortunate. I'm assuming he went through the follow-through and it didn't work his way. Ray now looking to bump his own. Doesn't work out, although... Leaves Tracy with might be a heavy hanger. Now, the right side would typically be the best line for that, but unaccessible right now. Has to opt for the middle. Loses his own disc. Jason now with an open 20 opportunity, and he gets it. The Canadian cue balls need something big now. Hutchinson going for the off in the 20 here. 
gets it. Very nice shot. Hutchinson putting in work this round. Right now, he can get this open 20. Be very good. Doesn't get it, but three discs on the board. Up the 20 with hammer advantage. They are most certainly in control of this round. And if they win, they will be moving on to the finals. Tracy trying to roll in to create an opportunity with no such luck. Now three discs on the board. Hutchinson with the last shot. He needs a triple and or a double and a 20 to make Ray shoot. Gets the double but that is not enough. The Power Flickers have won this semi-final match. I shouldn't speak too soon. They have now won the semi-final match. Congratulations to Jason and Ray Beerling. Jeremy Tracy and Andrew Hutchinson will now be going to the third place match to face the Holy City Flickers. And the Beerling brothers, returning champions of the U.S. Open Crokinole Championship, will be facing Ron Langell and Paul Brubaker, whose hammer is it in the finals match? Stay tuned as those matches will be coming out very shortly. Thank you for watching the U.S. Open Crokinole Championship, and make it a great day.